we're going to take a look at some of the organic materials that we can use uh, in building up our soils. And um, these are not all created equally, right? Nope. Tell me a bit about some of our options. All right. Well, so like here you've got compost, and it's one of the most common you know, organic amendments that gardeners would use. Um, the challenge with it, it, or the good thing about it, is it's rich in nutrients. It's got a good carbon, carbon to nitrogen ratio. So when you apply that to the soil, you're going to be ready to go to grow, grow your garden. The challenge is, is that because it's so high in nutrients, years and years of application cause excessive nutrient loading in the soil like phosphorus. And we hear about phosphorus and problems that it causes mm -hmm. with water quality. So I, I like to see a limit on this once your soil matures into a nice fertile soil. And that's where when we get into some of these other materials, they have lower organic or they have lower nutrient value per, per pound of material. And so you'll be much less likely of building that nutrient content too high. Okay. And one of the lowest is fresh well, grass clippings. <clears throat> fresh grass clippings are fairly good. I mean, they've got, you know, cause they're nice and fresh and green. And so they're going to have a pretty good nutrient content. The seed in ratio of them is about 20 to one. So you'll apply these and it'll take longer to release the nitrogen than it would from compost, but it will release and you can build some nutrients from that, but at least you're not bringing them in from off-site compost, unless you're composting your own leaf clippings and yard waste, um, you're bringing that in from off-site, whereas this is just being cycled through your yard. Okay. Um, and then the same thing with straw, it's an off-site deal. Now you use the term C to N ratio, uh, mm -hmm. which is carbon to nitrogen. So we're looking at the, the ratio of carbon and nitrogen that comes out of the material we're adding. Yeah. Um, just wanted to clarify that for yep. viewers. Because see, the microbes, this, this straw or grass, this uh, hay material, it's got a fairly high seed in ratio, probably about 50 to 60 to 1, mm -hmm. or 50 or 60 to 1. So that means it has, say, 60 carbon molecules for every molecule of nitrogen. And when microbes decompose that, they're gonna scavenge the nitrogen from your soil and rob it from your plants that you're actually trying to grow. So they won't grow and or they'll be yellowed. So mm -hmm. we need to be thoughtful when we use a material like that. So before we talk about the nitrogen, which is gonna be very important, there's one more material, actually two, we're sitting on top of uh, wood chips. Yeah. Certainly another material we can yep. use. And wood chips, you know, that's a great mulch. It's a fairly stable organic material. Um, because it's hard for the microbes and, and soil um, biology to break down, but it will slowly, if you keep it covered with wood chips, that material is adding to the organic condition of the, sub, of the soil as well. Mm -hmm. The peat moss, and I like peat moss because it's a fairly stable organic matter, meaning that it won't decompose as quickly. And so that's the challenge. Organic matter decomposes over time and we want that because that's gonna release nutrients and feed the microbial population. But we want it to be maintained to some extent. And this is a material that's as stable or nearly as stable as the compost with respect to pounds of organic matter applied that will persist over time, but it doesn't have as high nutrient content. So you can apply that without adding a whole a large amount of nutrients with it. Okay, and so, so you, we won't get that phosphorus build up and potassium yeah, build up. But yet it's a fairly stable organic matter material that will build water holding capacity and improve the drainage of clays and, and things like that. And But you have to be thoughtful too because if you, it will drive your pH down, mm -hmm. particularly in a sand. Uh, if you've got a heavy clay soil, not so much because it's more buffered. But these are the options, they have, have pros and cons and that can be used. Our garden cats decided to join us for this segment. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, cowboy. Good. So one thing we, we, we wanna put, um, these raw materials are really good to be putting down in the fall. Yeah. They'll decompose right into our soils. Exactly. So, and they take time to de decompose and break down and, and uh, do what you want. But during that fallow period, they'll keep the soil open, right? Mm -hmm. And But the challenge is, is is how that raw material is gonna affect your nutrients right. that you're gonna want to go into your into your garden and plants. You can see that sometimes uh, a garden that's been mulched, say with grass clippings or leaves, and the plants 
are struggling because they don't have enough nitrogen because exactly. the nitrogen is being used to decompose that. Yeah, and so you, you could put those in just prior to your off season and let them decompose and that'll kind of stabilize the nutrient condition versus putting them in in the spring mm -hmm. and then they'll be decomposing while your plants are trying to grow and that's kind of a problem, mm -hmm. uh, for, like you say. And so you'd want to use something like a compost in the spring because that's going to have ready, readily available nutrients in mm -hmm. it. And then build your organic matter with a raw material in the fall. Okay. And we're going to want to follow that up in the springtime with a soil test to make exactly. sure that we have adequate nitrogen. Yep. Because that soil test, will always, it'll tell you where you're at on your nitrogen concentrations and, and whether you need to apply supplemental nitrogen. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jason. Yep.